to see um, as a preliminary. Well, okay, so this is a Planetary Guardian team number one. This is session eight, so this is the end of module two. And um, again, since this is the first, no one's come this far. <laughs> I've got two other teams going and two other teams about to start. I, I don't know. I mean, the thing is, we could go on indefinitely, right? I mean, there's a lot of stuff to cover and lots of uh, work to flush out specifically for you to get custom design for what you want to do. Uh, the idea, like Matthew Learning is already got a team of four that he's starting to teach. And so one of the ideas, depending if you want, is for you to do what I'm doing with you guys with other teams and get paid. And so if, if you're actually got teams, then this is paid for. Right, so now you're getting sort of free learning and now you're making money. The idea is for you to take this and essentially make $100 per hour online, like I'm doing, if you want. You know, it depends. I mean, I don't know what your other jobs are or how, what you do to make money, but one of the things was to have planetary guardians make a minimum $100 per hour as their base salary. So I think if that's true, then that's a, a good thing to happen to people who usually go to university for four years, come out with uh, 30 grand in debt, and then they uh, try to make $30 an hour sometimes, right? So, I mean, if, if you can just go into these simple sessions and uh, all of a sudden without tra much training, you can start making 100, that to me is a, a change in the economic system from the get-go. Um, so I don't know if you guys actually want to do that, but that's there for you. Everything that I'm teaching with you, you can pass on to other people, and you have the videos online for you to kind of go over what we did go over but it's pretty simple stuff, right? Essentially. Uh, any thoughts? Could you ask them again? That's great. Oh, we're gonna get the recordings of these, did you say? Yeah, like they're being posted to Planetary Guardians each week. I'm, I'm a little, um, I'm trying to keep up to all my work and it's a little tough sometimes, but I, I am trying to take the film, put, load it up, and then I, I should send it to you so you, so you have it. But um, I think I think you guys might be a bit behind. I don't think I started doing the full cycle, so I'm doing it now. Every time there's a Zoom, I load it now. But when we first started out, I think there's a two or three maybe that are still back on my computer that I have to load up. Mm. Um, so, I mean, the idea being that the videos can be used as sort of marketing materials for you guys, or like, I, I think, did you get the, I sent um, the map, I guess, to, to Jorge uh, about, I made some nice maps for Planetary Guardians th three. I took mm -hmm. the five communication spaces, I went onto their Facebook and I took pictures for their personal space, one-on-one -on -one space, group space, communication space, and made very nice maps that you can then use for yourself but also a blank map that you can send to people and go, hey, would you like to fill this in? This is what I've done, and this is the cost, and so that you can use that as sort of marketing materials for get, getting your own clients. Mm -hmm. are, are, are any of you interested in sort of doing this? Maybe like I can speak a little bit for the group for some of the things that we're doing. Uh, we're coming into community with larger communities and inside of our own interpersonal relations relationships sort of sharing some of these things like with friends and stuff like that and nobody has so far mentioned like setting it up so officially um however i think that we're all open to the emergence of it yeah th this is this is what's happened in our discussion so far about what you're teaching uh so the biggest point that we talk about with your teachings is how it's integrated for us so i feel like yeah, we're on this level of really using it and going deep into using it. And perhaps the teaching will come after that. Personally, I feel like we're in the middle of using it. <laughs> and and uh, yeah, the possibility to teach it might open itself up after or not. It, but I don't hear or see anybody like pushing towards that, at least not right now. Okay. I yeah. feel for his. <laughs> yeah, for me. I've been mean, not so much for the money part, like the money part like, is like almost secondary because I'm working with close people that I know that are, are they don't know about this way of working together. Uh, so yeah, I'm like consciously, I'm seeing, uh, for example, two or three groups right now that I'm already initiated conversations with them about forming a group and I'm facilitating like the, the creation of shared values. 
and share intentions mm -hmm. uh, and just uh, facilitating that, that truth. And this is through working with the maps and showing them the maps that, that you share with us. Yeah, all of them. Uh, or yeah, and like and doing that check-in weekly has been very helpful for us. And and being able to do this for other people is pretty amazing. So yeah, I already have like two, two groups. Oh also. really? Awesome. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Yeah, and and again, it's up to you. You can charge or not. I mean, you can pass on the knowledge mm -hmm. as you see fit. I mean, I most of my. What is it? <laughs> sorry. Yeah, Interrupting, uh, but it's uh, like the part that is, is very the heart, is very much of the heart. Like, he's wanting to share with, with the people, and that's what's motivating it. If uh, money comes from it uh, in some time, that would be awesome too. But I think if there is a, the emergence of just doing it uh, out of the heart uh, for organizing, mm. it's, it's a big thing. Man. <laughs> and practice and experience, and then it can merge and grow into something else. Yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. Matt learning on the island here? Is that, you said Matthew learning has started? Yeah. Oh, he's on the island? Okay. I know. Yeah. Him. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, you know, because again, the, the tools are sort of, they can be used by yourselves. They can be shared with others. You know, yeah. the, it, 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 there, there's so many possibilities for what you can do with it. And there's a big difference between using the tools to do what you want to do versus using the tools to help others to get them doing what they want to do. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it makes sense to integrate and actually learn them and use them and then do something if you want. But um, I'm, I, I'm always, I, I would like to empower people to, to sort of, again, create the lifestyle that they want. But, okay, so we're here. Uh, Diego, do you have anything to say? Um, yeah, I mean, I just see the, the value of being able to share this with others and, yeah, the importance of, as you're mentioning, you know, if, I mean, yeah, being able to, to share this knowledge with others and truly it would be a great way to put in practice what we're integrating. And even it's really interesting because I was talking with my sister right now and she's with his, his, in a community house with his boyfriend. And just when his boyfriend sat with her, I just felt we were starting Planetary Guardians. I don't know why. I just felt like he's like, oh, I have another member joining. And he almost gave me that sense of group and Mm. hosting that space feels like a uh, powerful and i mean i i do see i could integrate it at one point i'm not sure when that would happen but i i, I like the potential and even i find that the uh, monetary part of it is pretty good because it's almost an incentive and it creates value and people truly care of okay i'm investing in myself so i see the real value of mm. going on this work i think it's a yeah. And it's affordable, I find $25 for a person in a week. And, and I think, I mean, if you really look at it, right, you're getting like $25 a week. And if you had, like, I'm, I'm aiming at doing five teams now. So I'll be making $500, a, a $2,000 a month. And, you know, most people can live off that, but it's only five hours a week, right? I, mean, I, I think it's it's part of the mindset of getting into the mindset that you're worth a hundred dollars an hour or that it's possible to make a hundred an hour yeah. and it's as simple as asking four people to give you 25 an hour to go through a one-hour session so it's I'm trying to make things as simple as possible to bring the work into the world but um, okay so last week we did the synergy wheel right mm -hmm. we did. yeah and could we could you just review that for me right now because i i had written it down and i was actually going to make a nice map for you but um yeah. the synergy wheel you mean like where we have with yeah. our values yeah so okay. what was the what was the value it's at, at, at one three point one yeah like is sustainability sustainability mm -hmm. okay and what was that two Focused. Okay. Three. Three. Gentleness. Okay. Operations is uh, four is commitment. Uh, five organization. Six passion. Seven accountability. 
eight inspiration or inspired and nine patience. And I think clarity in the middle, if I remember right. That was for level two. For level three, we put observation. Oh, observation. Okay. Yeah. Okay. For this, yeah. Okay. Could we have a round from everyone of anything, insights of the week? Did something happen in regards to these values that uh, perhaps had some extraordinary experiences? Uh, would you like to? <laughs> sure. Hurt the smiling lady. <laughs> uh, actually, lots, but I can't. I just can't think of one thought right now. Um, um, you know, we just I just did the en the test for the enneagram to see what archetype, and I don't think the others have done it. Maybe Diego has, um, but I got like I got four and seven. I was pretty sure I was the enthusiast, but I, I was surprised I got the individualist as well at four. And uh, so I've been struggling with that a little bit, but we have commitment in the four there. <laughs> so I just um, have been reviewing my commitment this week. And is that within me? Like, am I able to commit to such big projects and things? And um, so I just, I felt it because we did this through divination. I'm really grateful we did it this way. Uh, it felt like it had a message for me showing up in that area where I'm strong and accountability. <laughs> so that's my sharing. That's what I was going through personally with this. Um, okay. Yeah, I can go next. Uh, on Monday, we set up our weekly schedule. Like we have a, we've been having meetings every Monday morning that are, God, they take like a good hour or two, something like that, where we set up our schedule of our different spaces that we're holding and different projects that we're working on. And um, yeah, when we did that on Monday, in order to get some ideas uh, going, yeah, this space for for daily operations, uh, commitment came up, and uh, we really saw that how necessary it was for operations to to work or not work. Yeah, so it, it, it came up as something, and then it's also coming up in our personal relation, like between our family and our house, and like uh, the same thing for the operate for it to operate well there has to be showing up and commitment yeah so this one there's been a couple of times this week that yeah the, between Sweden and I like it's it's been mentioned and touched on a couple of times and then for me personally I remembered observation side of communication um, especially yesterday when I yeah uh, for I thought, am I truly listening or not listening? And so I was quiet and remembered this word observation. And I observed my patterns to see if I was truly listening and communicating well, or if I was in past habits of talking. <laughs> yeah, so this, yeah, this, was, this was useful this week. We've, we've uh, referred to it a couple of times for for projects and like workings and like these more business kind of things happening. And also for our like love and intimate relationship and it's workings and things happening as well. Yeah, it's worked on both levels for us. It's been awesome. referred to both levels. That's fantastic to hear. Yeah, that was my experience with it this week. Awesome. Morgan? Yeah, I, we've been going, I've been going deeper into the keywords and I'm like reading through them and why it's really a lot still to, to see it because now I'm reading some keywords like marketing that I didn't feel so connected with uh, but I, I was very connected with synergy uh, creativity and operations it's been a big talk of operations this this, this week and uh, the the word trust has come uh, combined with commitment like when there is commitment and there is operations that uh, is something that's working that generates trust um 
I know you said trust uh, from 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 this side, the side that's like doing the operations and the, the result to on the the other side, the consumer side, or what what is being serviced. Um, gentleness in learning has been amazing. Cause it's like okay, like, this, <laughs> like learning is there and it's coming, and these days we're learning at a amazing speed like incredible incredible speed like so much that uh, i'm seeing and learning from seeing myself either through video or through uh, my partners i'm working with and yeah it's <laughs> learning a lot learning a lot uh, we saw something in infrastructure too uh, like because it's associated with focus value and it's almost like an impeccability of infrastructure, like very, very focused uh, place. Uh, it's also with resources, I think. Um, so yeah, like being very, very conscious of, of the infrastructure and resources, how we're spending them, how we're using mm -hmm. them, how we're creating infrastructure. Yeah, and sustainability in research. Um, it was telling us something too uh, about like the time that we're spending in, in the phone or the time that we're spending online doing the research. Like it needs to be something sustainable. Uh, if it's uh, too uh, intensive or too uh, excessive, it can lead to unsustainability or another mm -hmm. way too. So it's been pretty amazing seeing how all of these keywords they they create a lens. Uh, for for us to see it, and it's been becoming more and more clear. Awesome, that's great to hear. If I may add something in terms of the marketing at eight, there's part of the the switch in mentality is is having the ability to switch words. And so let let's say marketing is the old paradigm word at eight. So mm -hmm. in the new paradigm, it would be interfacing. Interfacing, interfacing. Inter interfacing. Yeah. And so it's kind of like you know, the, whole, the old paradigm is about marketing and, and sort of creating this image in order to sell, right? Marketing campaigns. Like that's where your business goes out and markets its products, right? But interfacing is more, you look at your system and your system is interconnected to everything else. It's interfacing with everything all the time. So as opposed to marketing, you're interfacing. And so that's kind of like in the old paradigm, the prime reference point at 2.5 is product, but in the new paradigm, the prime reference point is gift. 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 The gift of the human. So we're switching from a product-centered economic system to a gift-centered economic system. So it's... It's like you're looking at that time cone, the old paradigm and the new paradigm, and your mind is being seeing the difference between here's the old paradigm and here's the new paradigm. Here's the central reference point of the product. Here's the central reference point of the gift. We market the product, but we interface our gifts. Yeah, I'm so curious. Wow, yeah, you're already seeing all this stuff. So okay, my, Diego, would you like to share? Uh huh. Yeah, I mean, just wow, interfacing our gifts. I really like that because I've been looking into the path of marketing a lot lately, like digital marketing. I think it's a career I'm growing into and. I like how it's related with the word inspiration because I find that the things that inspire me, it's almost the things I want to be sharing with the world. And I see that the way of sharing them is through marketing. Now I'm also seeing how it's the digital age is more of interfacing. I guess I'm starting to understand this new concept of it's just allowing almost to be interconnected and to say, hey, you know, these are my gifts and this is what I'm inspired to, to, to share. So here it is and just having multiple gateways where we can interface with others and share what, what we're passionate about and finding those ways so yeah i find that it's inspiring to to see that the way the way of, of sharing really it, it, sharing what inspires me I, I like that connection because it's not as 
as heavy of, oh, you know, I have to market this for a company. It's more like, wow, this is something I love and I'm ready to share it. So I'm inspired mm -hmm. to find a ways to reach people. Mm -hmm. So I really like, like that feeling. Mm -hmm. Then um, yeah, I resonated a lot with uh, number nine with our value for patience and it came with observance as well for us last time and just the, the the fact to be able to to truly be patient and and to listen and to observe it really opened my mind for two things when it came for us with stewardship it showed me how um like i have friends around the world but here in victoria i feel the strength where many of us are ready to become stewards of this land or more than ready we feel this calling of okay Things are being destroyed and we're here and we feel the land and we feel it's calling. But I almost feel also we don't find a way of how to be empowered to protect it. And I find that patience and being observant is so important because it's truly okay, what's happening and let's be patient and truly see what's going on so we can take a stand instead of just rushing ourselves into yeah, trying to protect something that we're still not clear. So, so I found that really important, mm. the connection of the value and stewardship. Mm. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, I find uh, yeah, then another one that came forward for me was, um, I guess, commitments and operations. It became clear how being, uh, showing up, that's something we talked about commitment of okay we're doing this is showing up for it and truly making it happen and i see that's it's so essential for operating together as a group because if there's not that commitment it's like oh we have these ideas of what we can do together and but then if we don't commit they don't come forward so that one came through as well mm -hmm. pretty clearly yeah and gentleness and learning i like that one a lot because it's yeah. almost like when teaching being gentle in teaching instead of Oh, this is what you have to learn in the so, learning in a gentle way. Well, it's 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 wonderful to hear from you and to, uh, to see the, because I think in everything we've been doing, one of the most powerful energetic fields is the synergy map field of your values together, mm. and that is going to attract the people, the resources, the energy, the more you get in tune with that, the more that you feel it, the more that you allow the higher energies to move through you, as you set your intention without doubt, without fear, without any of the negativities, the universe will bring to you all the experiences for you to further deepen and realize those values. At least that's the philosophy sort of behind this. And so I, I was, as you were speaking about, you know, the patience and thinking patience at timelessness and thinking, wow, in a, in a timeless state, you really need to be patient, right? And it's a beautiful kind of sense that you know that everything's going to unfold in the proper time, in the proper way. And if you have patience there as a leader at nine, that you have that um, presence and bearing that the others look to you for because you know where you're going you know that it's going to occur you know the vision is happening and you don't have to get all excited and kind of try to convince people you just know and you're just patiently waiting for them to get to the same state as you there's a lot of humans they have you know they doubt they don't believe they've got all these reasons why they can't go forward yeah um okay so today in terms of let's say the teaching of the day did you did you get those synergy cards mm -hmm. yeah, you did, did everyone you. does everyone have a sort of did everyone print something out or did, okay, everyone... I wish I did. So, you, so diego you haven't printed them out yet okay. so yeah i put them in the group uh but uh that they're just in there. We haven't printed them out. Okay, I'm just going to pause here and I'm going to bring them up on the screen share, okay? Okay. Just wait a second. So there's, there's those. There is another sheet. Those six plus they're synchronizing and synergizing. 
Okay. And do you all have, so Diego, do you have those cards? Did I send them to you? I, I, I think we're going to share them with us in our group conversation. Okay. Okay. So part of, part of what I have is called the new paradigm toolkit and the new paradigm toolkit are maps and game boards, card sets, processes, and software. And so the cards, there are 72 conversation types. And this, this could be the, I think the most um, significant tool that's kind of come through this work. And there's, you know, there's just, there's a lot of conversation types, right? And so what you have are the synergy, each one of the uh, synergy positions, research, infrastructure, learning, operations, creativity, synergy, services, interfacing, stewardship, have eight conversation types. Okay, so eight times nine is 72. There's 72 card sets. So at the synergy, the focus and e each one of the conversational sets is referring to the, the flow word. So it's synergy, it's relating to relationships. At services, it's paths. At interfacing, it's strategies. At research, it's fields. At infrastructure, it's resources. At, job, at lear learning, it's jobs. Operations, it's activities. And creativity. Okay, do you know in the, in the synergy wheel, which we just did, right? Mm -hmm. We have those 10 words, mm -hmm. right? At the flow wheel, did we, have we done a flow wheel? Yeah, we did a flow wheel. Okay, so at the flow wheel, we have fields, resources, jobs, activities, products, relationships, paths, strategies, agreements, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now these conversation types need a reference point. They need something to connect to, to go, okay, well, what are these conversation types all about? So at the synergy position, which is at the hour and at relationships. So this is all about relationships. Which is, synergy is about how do you guys come together as a team, as an individual part, but then as you, as you come together as a part, you form a whole, and then there's this energy between you. And I don't know how much you're experiencing that, but the, to, to me, the, the more love there is, the more connection, the more trust that's between you, you are now creating this powerful synergy field that attracts your vision to you. You're defining your future. You are now moving as a team and you are starting to clarify your future. And what you're doing is you're creating a mental processing infrastructure in each of your minds that becomes shared. Then it gets programmed by the values. And then these conversation types are ways of communicating. So if you look at conflict resolution, or if you look at uh, clearing, or you look at grieving, or you look at synchronizing, or you look at synergizing, or you look at healing, all of these are types of conversations. And so uh, is anyone familiar with nonviolent communication? Have you heard of it? So. Nonviolent communication is essentially a healing conversation where you put the intention of compassion and you focus on the person's need. So if someone's coming at you with you angry, they're all mad, the assumption is that they're having an unmet need. And that if you just stand in your presence and they come at you with whatever they have, you listen. You just listen to what they're saying. You don't take in all the negativity. And what you're, you're standing in your compassion and what you're doing is you're going, okay, what is the need that is unmet? So it's like a spell. So you can take these, if you, if you look at these cards, there's like a, there's a, another kind of time cone and there's intention and attention, the heart and the mind. So the values are the programming of the intention. 
what you just did is, is you, you, your programming was sustainability and focus and gentleness and commitment, organization and passion, accountability, inspiration, patience and observation. You're programming the field of your connection together with your shared intention and agreement that these are the values that you guys are gonna share. And then now you're having communication within it. But what the cards do is the cards give you something that is unconscious and makes it conscious. So let's say Diego one day comes up to Jorge and goes, I gotta clear something with you. And right away you know, okay, we're coming up to a clearing conversation. There's, there's something that's bugging Diego. And Diego comes up and goes, you put my coffee on the, on that, on that, on my table. And you, and you didn't use a coaster. <laughs> and in a lot of situations, you know, it's like, it doesn't mean anything, but the table might've been his grandmother's table and he polished it every day for 20 years. And Orga just threw his coffee down on the table and didn't even think about it. Doesn't even know anything about it. Right. And Diego's inside going, man, I love this man. It's beautiful man but he's really bugging me right now because that coffee cup's on my table and I'm bugged. <laughs> and, and if I don't say anything, I, I'm going to keep it inside. And then if he does it again, I'm going to get a little irritated. And if he keeps doing it, it's going to build up. And all of a sudden, now we got a problem, right? So humans are like this about everything. And I'm sure you're laughing, smiling, because you know, right? It's, you put your toothbrush in the wrong glass. You, you didn't screw the cup. The, 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 the thing on tight enough, all these little things that we do that bug other people, right? And if we don't clear it and clear it in a way that sometimes, let's say Diego might come to you and say, you put the coffee cup on my thing and, and Yuri's going, fuck man, I just worked 12 straight hours dra dragging logs across the forest. <laughs> I don't care about your coffee cup. I'm tired. I'm sorry. Frick off, right? And so th th there's this kind of out of balanceness around how we kind of clear things because we make a big deal out of something that maybe isn't. And the other person usually thinks it's not a big deal, but one person thinks it is. And it doesn't matter what it is. Everyone has the right to sort of feel what they do about whatever they do. So the clearing conversation is, the, is just like both of you have agreed ahead of time if we got a problem with each other, we'll clear it. Because I don't want to resent you. I don't want to hold any negativity about you. I love you. But sometimes, right, you're bugging me. So I've noticed over the years that the clearing conversation is one of the hardest conversations, especially amongst people who love each other. Because you don't want to bring up little things. You, you know, something's bugging you. You don't want to say it because it's actually maybe a little humiliating. <laughs> but it's something, you know... That's that, that when you were four years old, it became a pattern and, and there's something about that table and, and you, 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 it's just something that's so important, but to the other person, it's meaningless. But it's not, the, po the point isn't that it's meaningless. The point is we can just clear it. Just tell me, okay, you don't like that? Great, I got it. There you go. Are you clear? Are you clear? And so both people, when you have a clearing convo, once you're both clear, you're good. You don't have to bring it up. It's done. Now you're back into a more loving field. So that's, that's a very specific conversation. And that's a specific conversation that in my opinion, doesn't exist that well amongst human beings. So the idea of these cards is like giving it a specific, it is a thing, it exists. And once both of it or everyone understands what a clearing conversation is, all you gotta do is, hey, can I clear something with you? And then you go, well, not now, like I'm in the middle of watching my favorite movie or I'm in the middle of a shower. Like, can you wait until tomorrow and we'll clear it? And then you both go, okay. And then things will be way better. Um, any thoughts just on that? Yeah, wow. Thank it's, you. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> Uh, the beginning like, is so new that like, I never seen it in this, this light before. Okay. Never seen it, in my life before. it feels very useful. I look forward to using it.
yeah. I see. Uh, yeah, I, even just reading the titles, when you first send it, I, I read them and they were big impact and they've been big anchors for the last tour, the last week. For the last week, they've been anchors in our relationship and especially the one clearing. And there was one about for, forgiveness or something like that. Like, or maybe that was a post that you made. <laughs> I don't know. Something about forgiving completely. Um, yeah, they even this these keywords are great anchors for com how to work out the synergy in the in the relationships. I think we're about to Zoom's about to close, so we'll just end it here, and I'll invite you all back in. Okay. Okay. Thank you.